Welcome back to the channel. So I've got something really cool that we're gonna be checking out that just got released. I was in Claude yesterday and I saw this little feature over here. It says research, it's in beta. They just came out with this. It's kind of crazy because these large language models like Claude AI and you've got your chat GPTs and you've got your Google Gemini's, the three that come to mind that I actually use on a daily basis, but they're all kind of pushing each other and pushing that envelope in order to you know cause each one one of them to add features that the other large language model is adding, right? So uh, let's say Google Gemini is definitely known for its deep research. They have a really good deep research feature and I've been testing it for the last three weeks. It's mind blowing what Google Gemini can do. It took forever for Claude to even allow links uh, to scrape live information. It took them over a year to develop that, even though Gemini and ChatGPT were already doing that. It's interesting what we're seeing with Claude AI. They are moving a lot faster now and trying to keep up with Gemini and ChatGPT. Now, Claude AI has always been my favorite over the last year or more for its writing abilities, writing more human-like, and its simple ease of use. I use this all day, every day. You can see right here, the proof is that I use this. We can go to projects and you can see that I have dozens of projects that I use daily. Right over here, one day ago, I use this one, the newsletter, but then I have one that I use almost every single day, which is the viral YouTube title creator. So we go over here, just type in a title, Oh, this is just when it's updated. So you can see like, I'll click on this and I'll use it. So like right over here, the better example is just to click on it and show you 18 hours ago, 21 hours ago, one day ago, two days ago, two days ago, five days ago, I use this as my own software because look at all of the project knowledge that I'm able to put in here, all of the advanced instructions that I'm able to put in here. And then I'm able to paste my YouTube transcript in here and it creates amazing titles for me for YouTube, creates my YouTube description, creates my YouTube tags, does all the SEO for me, it saves me a ton of time. I really love using this. But lately I've been using Google Gemini a lot and we're going to be testing out some of the things that were just mind blowing in Gemini 2.5 Pro. Deep research, you can see the deep research is turned on right here. I did this one over here. My website is ketocrest.com. Here's the whole prompt. You can pause and read that if you want. But it went out and it, did, it took a bunch of time and it came out with this amazing content plan for us, what we need to focus on for our next articles that we can rank for. Then we did another one as well. So what we're gonna do is we're going to be looking at, if you went to new chat, right here and you click the research button and then you want to go and do deep dive research on stuff. We're going to take those exact prompts, two exact prompts, the keto blog content strategy. And then I have another one over here, which is the keto bagel recipe. Let's jump into the keto bagel recipe, research the highest rated keto bagel recipes and research the comments and reviews that users give feedback on how to improve their recipes and cooking methods. Improve on the best recipe you find, make it even better, give me the final recipe in a concise format, listing all the ingredients needed and the cooking instructions. This is going to go out there and research the best keto bagel recipes on the internet. And then it's going to research all the customer feedback from all those recipes, right? And then it's going to improve, take the best of both worlds on multiple recipes, find out what the best ingredients are. There's all kinds of different techniques in keto baking to try to get your ingredients to bind together because you're not using real flour, right? So you have to use other substitutes like xanthan gum and so forth. And essentially, it's going to take all that feedback, any negative things that people have tried the recipe, and then they were like, I can actually improve on this even better. It's going to finally come together and make a decision on what it thinks is the best ultimate keto recipe for us. This one took seven minutes and 25 seconds. I'll probably leave a comment below if you want like a time test, which one's faster, because if they both come up with really good answers, but one is twice as fast, you might gravitate more towards that, especially if that's a feature you use a lot and you already are subscribed to Claude, then maybe you don't need Google Gemini or vice versa. But I'll just say right here, I don't know what the time is right over here on the keto bagel recipe one. I'll go back and see if I remember and we can go and see how long it took. I do like this transparency on Claude's behalf that they actually tell you how long it's spent in each research part of the task. They're not hiding how long this takes. They're telling you how long it took. This AI took seven minutes. It spent seven and a half minutes researching this subject for us. So it 
it said, I'll dive into this. Boom, here is all the research. Keto Bagel recipe research. We can open this up and you can see all 150 sources. Already I can tell you that this is kind of in the direction of Google Gemini. The last one that I did yesterday researched over 160 websites to come up with its final answer, which did take a long time on a task that I used it for yesterday, but it does research a lot of websites. 150 sources right here, so I'm impressed so far. 199 resources right here that it went through and sorted. You can see all the research around what it's actually doing for us. Fathead dough with mozzarella cheese and almond coconut flour dominates highest rated keto bagel recipes with two to five grams of net carbs per bagel. We can click on this and see all the sources, all the websites. So far, very impressive. Users report keto bagels commonly suffer from density, flattening, crumbling issues. Here's 82 sources that prove that, right? So it's not just coming up with what it thinks fat, like fathead dough, mozzarella cheese, and coconut flour as the most common that it's finding in the best recipes, right? You can make almond flour, you can make your keto bagels a different way, but this research shows that the most common, highest rated recipes follow this format. Users re report this is a very common negative thing about making keto bagel recipes that we are trying to solve. And then food science reveals keto bagels needs uh, specific cheese protein net uh, networks, flour alternatives, and binding agents to mimic a gluten structure. Like I said just before, boom, your research report is ready. Okay. So that's that first part right over here. And then it says your optimized keto bagel recipe is ready. It incorporates xanthan gum, which I'm not surprised that one's probably the best. It does possibly have some negative side effects for some people. I've eaten it plenty. It doesn't give any kind of stomach issues, but it can cause some digestive type issues or something like that. But xanthan gum is in a lot of food, even standard food from the grocery store. It's in a lot of candies and so forth. It's a better structure, precise temperature control and food processing or method that prevents spreading issues. So it did all this research. Let's click on this button and see what it came up with. So I'm not going to bore you with reading this entire thing right here, but you can see that there's sources throughout that we can click on this. We can go to the website and do more research if we want to. It shows the research throughout, which is super cool. You could obviously use this to write articles and to add external links. These LLMs, Claude AI, Gemini, and ChatGPT are developing at such a fast rate. It's becoming ridiculously impressive what they're able to do in a short amount of time. Look at all this research, researching almost 200 websites that we didn't have to go out there and do, that, which we literally could have taken the entire day and I still wouldn't have been able to research 200 websites. We would only be using a human brain to decide what we think is the most common, right? In order to do that, you'd actually have to create a spreadsheet, create all the ingredients, and then go and check out all the sources and then tick box the number of times that ingredients was used. And then the rating and so forth, you see how complex this research actually is very mind-blowing. All right, so we have the ingredients right here. User testing shows th this approach eliminates the spreading issues that plagued 70% of attempts with standard recipes, while the food processor method ensures proper protein network development that creates authentic bagel-like structures. So it is finding all of the experts with keto cooking on YouTube and their websites, and it's go it's researching all of that, and it's going to come up with its own recipe for us. Now you actually are using AI to create a knowledge research-based recipe that might even be better than all these because it's going to take the best components of everything and user feedback to come up with a recipe. You could actually use this to create a YouTube channel if you're on a special diet or something like that. And then you may as well make content on it and try out these new recipes. I've already seen people doing this exact thing and they're approaching 200,000 subscribers in like one year on YouTube. So you can actually do stuff like this and really cool stuff. So here's the ingredients. Cheese base, three cups of low moisture, part skim, mozzarella cheese, shredded, cream cheese and eggs right here. Then you have your dry mix. We're going to go with almond flour, coconut flour. So, so far I can tell you right now that this is very like accurate and true to all of the, cause I'm on a keto diet. So basically when you watch these videos, you usually want to use a lot more. There's usually like four times as much almond flour as coconut flour because coconut flour absorbs way, way more of the liquid or moisture in your mix. It's very aggressive at sucking in moisture, but it adds good texture. This is just a perfect blend. And a lot of times when you use both both of these, you get a really good mixture. Like I said, usually almond flour is a lot more of an ingredient and then coconut flour is usually just a couple of tablespoons. And so that's very accurate right here. And you can see that they're combining different types right here, like wholesome yum. And then we have all day I dream about food and then peace, love and low carb. It's doing exactly what we said to do and combining them all together. 
in this nice format right here. So we have our baking powder, xanthan gum, garlic powder, onion powder, and these ones are optional. And then a half a teaspoon of salt. This is very similar to the one that Gemini created. It's on point. It is impressive. Um, and then we have a topping right over here as well. And then we have our nice instructions right here. It's going to tell us exactly what to do to create these bagels. I like the layout. It performed really well. And I almost want to say that this seemed faster than Gemini, but we will see. Let's check out our other test. This was one of my first tests a few weeks ago using the deep research method in Gemini. And here's the prompt. My website's ketocrush.com. I found a competitor here, Perfect Keto. And I basically tell it, hey, research this website because it's getting like 200,000 visitors per month. It looks like it's a very niche blog in the keto niche, but it is not so big that it's either a government site or a medical site that we would not be able to compete with. It's just a simple niche keto blog. I wanted to go out there and do a content gap analysis and that's what it did. So you can see it came up with this final content plan right here. It gave us the article topic the primary keywords we're going after, the angle and the format notes right over here. I took this right over here and it is still researching. We're 24 minutes into the research. This gives you a great idea of how complex the task is. This competitive analysis is complex. We're 24 minutes in over three times and look at this live right in front of you finally finished its research, which is awesome. Just know that it is doing real live research, web scraping analysis, re advanced reasoning. It is doing a ton of stuff in the background that we almost can't fathom outlining what it's actually doing is intimidating and stressful. It says 11 minutes right here, but that can't be true because we just saw that it was 21 minutes in. Okay. So about 21 minutes, this one right here took three times as much as the keto one. So there are ones that you just have to think which one, how complex the task is. It's going to take more time. Just know that it did an advanced analysis. We'll take a look at that. Your keto crush content strategy report is ready. It analyzed Perfect Keto's content weaknesses and identified key opportunities for Keto Crust to expand beyond recipes into educational content. The report focused on targeting underserved demographics with women's hormonal health, budget-friendly family approaches, and age-specific content as high priority areas. It includes SEO optimization strategies and a 12-month implementation roadmap leveraging Keto Crush family focus positioning. So let's go take a look at what the research looked like. It gathered 342 resources. How many did Google Gemini's research research? Just kind of looking over here, analyze results, trying to see if Gemini even gives us that information, like how many sites we can come over here, sources used in the report. So it didn't use as many. So we have a perfect keto right here, and then we have keto crest. So we were only asking it to do those two things, right? Only analyze that site and then our site right here. So it makes sense that it's only doing that. Kind of interested over here, why did this? Ga gather 342 resources to do this task. There is a great way that shows they are different in this task. Gemini felt had enough research and we were only comparing two websites. It didn't need any expanded research past that, but Claude took a different approach and researched 342 resources, which we can look at right here. Click on that. Here are Perfect Keto. It got a bunch of results and it came over into here to try to find what everybody else is doing as well. 100 sources there, 63 sources there, 76 sources there, and 100 sources. Boom, research report is done. I like the steps that it's going through. And then here is our content plan. Let's click on that and see what this one looks like. So we've got Keto Crush Content Strategy competing with Perfect Keto. Keto Crush has a significant opportunity to expand beyond recipes into educational content by targeting these demographics. Perfect Keto dominates supplements focused and scientific content, but struggles with family oriented, budget conscious and women specific topics. So exactly where Keto Crush's practical family first approach can shine. Okay, so we can come through here and read this stuff right over here to give you some information about what the average length of article and blah, blah, blah. But we're going to come down here, I wanted to see what the content plan looks like. So we have budget friendly, keto fills a massive gap, we have keto family meals under $10, one pot solutions builds keto, keto Crush's recipe strength, it's giving us a content Content plan based on a content gap on a blog that's doing way better than us. If we implemented all this and started getting some results, then the blog could actually start making money. This is a way different approach than using traditional SEO keyword research methods, which old school SEOs and even new SEOs are probably still using. It would be interesting to see how many of them are doing an approach like this and letting AI take over and do all the research and tell us what we should be creating. But the best part about this would be to test this. Have this plan right here, create content, keep us 
spreadsheet, find out what actually starts getting traffic, what blog articles actually start ranking for multiple keywords, but then also do your standard keyword research SEO techniques so that you can see which one actually works the best. And then it's giving us some really good ideas right there, recommended articles. Here's the age specific keto content addresses growing demographics between 25 and 45 adults. And then we have all of these articles right there. We can come down here. What I want to do now is say cool. Now give me all the ideas in a nice table format, far right column, add a heading with published article. And then I'm going to say add 30 more topics. Okay, so right there, I said, cool. Now give me all the ideas in a nice table format, far right column, add a heading with published article, add 30 more topics after adding the initial suggested topics from the report. And we're going to say go. And now it should be able to create a table for us. Add all these ones in there. You look at this phases, phase one, two, three, and so forth. Now it's going to go ahead and create a table for us. You can see it's doing all this for us. It's telling us kind of what the content gap that it addressed. And it's going to tell us what our priority is. High right there, article title right here. It is creating a game plan. It's even telling us the estimated search. It's giving us a check mark box of published article and so forth. So we have our target keywords. They both performed very well. This wasn't meant to be a comparison, but because I've been using Google Gemini deep research, this passes the test. So far, this seems like it can handle a very complex task like advanced content gap analysis, create a content plan for your website based on real world research and not just saying, give me my next 30 ideas for my blog about keto. This is doing deep research and comparing what you do not have on your site that a site that is getting 50 times more traffic than you're getting, but it's also not in the millions. So it's realistic that you could actually do something and make some ground. This is the table right here. What I would like to see right over here is a little button that says export to sheets. And maybe that's something you only get in Google Gemini because it is a Google platform using one of its other products. I love that feature in Google Gemini you can just click export to sheets and it goes right to sheets. This probably would be a little bit of an issue to try to get into a spreadsheet. The best way that I found to do this is to come down here. Usually you have a copy button and I'm not seeing the copy button over here. There's a copy right here. Download as markdown, save as PDF. I'm just going to say copy this and then we'll go in real quick. A little bit of a blank sheet and then right here I'm going to say paste that's what you're probably going to end up having to do. And then what you'll end up doing is cleaning this up. So you'll have to delete the row and then you'll have to come down here. We have our 45 articles phase one. So you can actually leave all that in right here. So we'd actually just take all this data right here. We'll just go down to 10 right there. And then you could take the rest of this right here. And then you would also make it a little bit easier to read, maybe a 12, take the bold off like that, and then double click these lines right here. And if you wanted to, you could shape this up a little bit, highlight those, go over here to this text wrapping, and then maybe move this over. Now you're actually looking at a spreadsheet, add your lines like this, and maybe add an X when you publish the article. I don't really like check marks because they don't actually work, but now you have your content plan. Look at how many articles we actually have. Oh, and what I like to do is highlight that top right there. Boom. Maybe even change the color so it's identified as a header Then go up to view and freeze one row. And now you have your content plan right here that you could go out and start writing content for 46 articles, boom, done. What do you guys think? First look at deep research that's in beta, just got released like yesterday. It's super cool seeing how fast Claude AI is moving to keep up with Gemini and ChatGPT. I am impressed. It passed the test. I'm very impressed. I'm not willing to say which one's better. I'd have to test a lot more, but so far this past two tests passed it really well. What do you guys think? If you watched the whole video below, let me know. I appreciate you guys. Let me know if you want more videos like this. I'll keep you informed. I'm actually using these tools on a daily basis, unlike other people that are just trying to create content to show you the latest version. I actually cook my own keto stuff. I actually cook keto bagels. So those are exact methods and reasons that I'm using AI to help myself out in my personal life cooking, but also for website strategies, keyword research strategies, and YouTube strategies. I use this on a daily basis. And then you can see over here in Google Gemini, if we come over here, you can see I'm using Gemini on a daily basis as well. So you're learning from someone that's actually putting these tools to the test in real world use and not just trying to make content for you that tells you about these new features, but isn't actually applying them in practical ways. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.